The next activity that you're going to do, this is actually my favorite activity, and I enjoy it the most. Um, the goal is to have the kids understand what a budget is. And then it also ties back in with the World of Work board game that we just played, as well as the occupation poster, because you're going to start by handing out cards, and the cards look like this to the students and they're an occupation. And the occupation just lists, you know, a family doctor or a park ranger, and it has gross and net salaries. I would, before you hand these out, make sure that in the ones you're going to hand out, you're going to hand out the highest salary and you're going to hand out the lowest salary. And you're going to know what those are because you're going to want to come back to them during the class. Um, Additionally, if you've kind of gotten a feel for some of the students, and if you have some more rowdy students, in my mind, I don't like to give them, you know, the lowest salary or the highest salary because it helps to keep a more kind of even tone in the room. So the first thing that I love is just to see their eyes open when they see, you know, a, a doctor monthly gross is $12,000 and then some other jobs that they really wanted. So for example, they might have wanted to be a gas station attendant and they see that income and that that's gonna be, you know, $2,000 a month. Really, they have this conversation amongst themselves and I think it's great for them to see that. So I always bring it back to, we had to stay in school. And if you wanted to be a doctor, not only did you have to do the four years you saw in here, you had to go on to higher education. Um, gas station attendant could be a high school dropout. So I always try to bring it back to that. And then I always try to circle back to um, the World of Work board with if it's a people job, a data job, and to just try to emphasize that fact as well. Then the next thing that I always do is I explain this gross and net income concept. Um, I found that these kids are very familiar with taxes and I talk to them about what tax money is for because in their minds they are never going to pay taxes and they, they don't want to. So we spend a lot of time talking about that. And then as well as the income or the impact on your monthly salary that you take home. So if you see a job posted for $10 an hour, you're not taking home that $10 an hour. So that's a, a good concept to get them to understand. Then I usually also bring it on a little further and talk about the other things that might come out of your paycheck, such as medical benefits and the other things that you need to pay, such that the amount that you get home is even less. Again, coming back to the need to stay in school. Um, then what we do is we put up the need and want posters. And I have them up there, and honestly, I found that the things that are pictured on here aren't always relevant to the kids. So I will hang it up, but generally the kids that I'm talking to in a lot of the inner city schools aren't going to tennis or golf or skiing every weekend. So although I hang these up, um, I do talk to them about their needs and their wants and what they like. So what do they like to do on the weekend? What do they like to spend money on? I also try to bring it back to things such as, you know, mp3 downloads or new video games trying to get it in something that at least i hope i'm more relating to a teenager i also talk about it in different ways for example the um the eating and then there's an apartment one that talks about you know uh, eating at home versus eating at a restaurant and the different costs I also then just try to take it to things that maybe they could relate to. So the difference between if they're shopping at an Ocean State job lab versus shopping at maybe somewhere in the mall, like a Macy's and the different cost and how that factors into their budget. So what I then do next is I go back to the cards and I have the students talk about, I'll have maybe a student or two or three stand up, explain their income and then kind of explain where on these boards, posters that they could be. So they could be going out to restaurants every night. They could be having a more lavish apartment as a doctor versus we take maybe the landscaper and show where that is on these boards. Um, there is a skill, an exercise then 
in the workbook that the students are supposed to take in their cards and their salary and write out the percentages that they're recommended that they spend on food and rent or housing. We also talk about there should be um, charitable spending and you can even modify it to put in something about retirement and savings for retirement. Um, what I find is that this is where it really becomes relevant that these kids don't know how to use a calculator. So I spend a lot of this time focused on showing them how to use a calculator so that they can understand what 40% of $2,000 might be. So we spend a lot of time on basic, basic math skills here. Um, I don't usually complete the exercise fully, but what I normally do is spend a lot of time on the math, we go through the recommended numbers, and then we talk about what the kids would do, whether or not they might spend more money on food or you know, be in a less expensive apartment. And the kids usually always say, I'm not gonna give money to charity. And that's when I always make sure I bring it around and talk about, well, then I wouldn't be here. Or you might not have certain activities at school. So I try to bring it around to that, and I also try to bring it around the importance of saving as well. Um, I think this is, like I said, this is probably my favorite activity of the day, and I actually think the kids really do learn a lot about it. But this is one where it's really, I think, kind of okay to stray from the basic materials on the